What do the Boogeyman, Pazuzu, Russell, the Murdoch Imposter, and Paula Cracker have in common? And what does it mean for the future of gorillas? That's what we'll be discussing today. Hello readers and digital people, and welcome back to GP Reads. I am your host, Grant Reads, and today's journey will take us on an all too familiar path, but with an outlook that I hadn't considered until I made this connection. Cracker Island, Paula Cracker. Now I know what you might be thinking, you're jumping to conclusions, and usually I would agree with you. However, this breadcrumb trail led me to some very questionable bits of information that forced me to do a double take. Let's jump over to my mad science counterpart to show you exactly what I mean. Hello everyone. Let's take a second look at a few key features of the Cracker Island video. Let's start with this. Look at the two images very closely. Now, look at the first compared to this. And while this one is not as easy to confirm, because it's merely conceptual art from the early days of gorillas, look at this one. The eye colors, especially. The older woman might have dead eyes. This is exacerbated by the fact that they can turn a glossy blue similar to how 2D's eyes can turn a milky color, as well as Russell's. If you're wondering why the very recognizable birthmark is not on her lip, listen to this. In the band's original lineup image, the birthmark above Paula's lip is missing, meaning she could have concealed it with makeup for the photo shoot. Who's to say she didn't do this again for her grand performance? Why would this old school and washed out gorillas character be making a return? Awkward Airy says there were some callbacks to events and characters from Plastic Beach and Song Machine. So, as this commenter highlighted, Gorillaz is making a return to some of the older concepts in many ways. The return of Kong Studios, the symbols, and the fairly recent song Deja Vu practically hinting at it, just to name a few. Not to mention this unexplained sketch on Jamie Hewlett's official Instagram. With this in mind, let's look into the possible motives. This information was taken directly from the Gorillaz wiki and Amino. Paula Cracker is Tootie's ex-girlfriend and the band's first guitarist. She was kicked from the band after Russell caught her having an affair with Murdoch in the Kong studio toilets. She was eventually replaced by Noodle as the band's guitarist in 1998. Paula is considered a sensitive subject whenever Tootie is present. In the Plastic Beach iTunes interview, Tootie attacked Murdoch for mentioning the incident with Paula, prompting Murdoch to stop him with a chloroform-stained rag. As of 2020, Paula is the manager of Asda in Stoke-on-Trent. She did participate in the interviews for Rise of the Ogre. She was also featured in the Where Are They Now page, along with Cortez the Raven in Gorilla's Almanac. Sounds pretty cut and dry, right? She moved on and started her own thing. Well, let's take a look at some of the bits of information from Rise of the Ogre and Where Are They Now. And the only weak link did appear to be Paula the guitar player. Uh, Paula was the girl who played guitar for us early on. 2D had been seeing her. But she, well, it didn't really work out in the band, you know. But one night, Russell found both Murdoch and Paula up to no good together in the toilets at Kong. Cubicle number three, I seem to recall. Paula Cracker, Gorilla's first guitarist, tells her side of the story. Well, I've been seeing Stu Pot for about two months. I played a bit of guitar and used to buy strings from the shop he worked in. He was very sweet. A bit thick, though. He said that he was going to be a singer in this band, yeah? They didn't have a name yet. And I thought, yeah, I heard it all before. Still, I went down to Kong Studio to check him out, and I ended up playing with them. But when I saw Murdoch, with his thick greasy hair, green teeth and yellow skin, I thought, oh, he's the one for me. Maybe she's on some sort of medication. Oh, he's such a dandy, like Elle Flynn or something. But after that thing in the toilets, they kicked me out. But I never heard from Murdoch again, and my purse was gone. Since then, they've become this big, massive band. So I guess I was pleased for them. But it also kind of makes me feel really, uh, sick. In the head. Like I want to hurt people. They tried to write me out the story of gorillas, but I was the guitarist way before that noodle. I've got half a mind to hunt them down and start screwing with their heads. I think she is on medication. That doesn't seem like she's over it to me. The Rise of the Ogre book claims that she was mentally unwell. It's claimed that Paula had told Penguin Publishing this was untrue. Although, something convinced them to look the other way. Something convinced them, you say. And now the entry from the almanac. Over the years, wild rumors circulated, some even suggesting that a vengeful Paula was the mastermind behind various plots against gorillas, from early assassination attempts to coordinating the pirate attacks at Plastic Beach. The truth is, shortly after leaving the band, consumed by a mix of guilt and bitterness, Paula apologizes to 2D with a homemade cherry trifle, his favorite. 
set fire to an effigy of Murdoch, and then put the whole experience behind her, like roadkill in the rearview mirror. Focusing her emotions into a laser beam of positive thinking, she shot for the stars, and went on to achieve a life of stunning success. Paula's first breakthrough was to invent and patent seagull repelling chips, solving an age-old problem for British seaside goers. She funneled the profits into a pioneering AI startup, became the first human to climb El Capitan in platform shoes, and reached the semi-final of the Great British Bake Off with her cherry trifle. And in a bizarre twist of fate, an AI chip designed by Paula's tech company ended up in the motherboard of Cyborg Noodle. Life is weird sometimes. When our investigator caught up with her for a chat about gorillas, Paula uttered these three words. They still going? And with that, she turned and strode off into the sunset. You could almost hear a 1980s power ballad accompanying her self-assured departure. Like a closing credits Julia Roberts. So long, Paula. It's been emotional. That doesn't sound like the same person to me. This sounds like a cover-up. It's a little too happy, you know what I mean? So now we have the motivation for wanting to return. And we know the intentions are most likely malicious. So it seems like to me that Paula wants revenge against the band. And possibly wanted to get back with Murdoch. Romantically. But when I saw Murdoch with his thick greasy hair, green teeth and yellow skin, I thought, oh, he's the one for me. And look where she ended up. If this is truly her, the gorillas had to pay. And she did get back with Murdoch. She got exactly what she wanted in the end. Who knows what this could mean for the band moving forward. Now that we have the why, let's look a bit deeper at the how. Remember when we mentioned that the boogeyman could be what we are seeing here? That perhaps he was switched out with this entity or sacrificed to it? There is more than one reason behind that. The Boogeyman, also known as Sun Moon Stars, and also described as Flatulence, the fifth horseman of the apocalypse by Jamie Hewlett, is one of the antagonists of the gorillas. Murdoch mentioned in his first live with fans that the Boogeyman was the essence of everything bad in the world in one person, though Murdoch's opinion of him may very well have been biased as the two were mortal enemies at the time. Murdoch has stated in the blog on the Gorillaz website that he made some deals with the Boogeyman, which Murdoch said was actually a demon, to ensure a career at the top of the music charts, and to get rid of some of the unwanted people. In turn, Murdoch would give access to various souls of innocent kids and stuff. Murdoch, however, made sure he wasn't around and the Boogeyman would come to collect his payment. And now, he'd return to take revenge on Murdoch. When the Boogeyman invaded Plastic Beach during the events of Rhinestone Eyes, Murdoch had the imposter take his place so that the wrong soul would be collected, settling the debt between the two. Or did it? In the Do You Thing music video, the Boogeyman appears in the living room, reading a newspaper before glaring at 2D. And after that, in the Now Now Q&A, on June 29th, 2018, two different answers were given when asked what happened to the Boogeyman. One was that he'd become a star in Boogie Nights, and the other was that he is now working as the personal chef for gorillas, as of Murdoch's arrest. I don't think either is true. I believe that the Boogeyman has been stalking Murdoch after being tricked, and has been trying to plot a way to get the correct soul. This would explain Murdoch's willingness to work with Paula Cracker. He would summon the demon she wanted to call upon, possibly Pazuzu, to grant Paula eternal life, so she could be his companion indefinitely. And as tribute for this summon, use the Boogeyman. This twisted, albeit brilliant scheme would line up well with Murdoch's selfish tendencies, remove an age-old problem, and temporarily prevent the problems that could arise with Paula at the expense of her, the Boogeyman, and the rest of the band. Oh, and don't think I forgot about Russell. As we all clearly know, Russell is very open to possession and would have been all too easy to use as a vessel for the demon during the ritual. He was then brought to the hospital where he worked his magic on Paula, reviving her and making her immortal. While all this was being done, Russell was in a trance-like state, focusing the spirit's energies to the body when the deed was done, Russell snapped to attention and joined the others. So, where do I think things will go from here? Well, we've seen a ton of growth in 2D as of late. A prime example being when he stood up to Murdoch and had him kicked from the band. He is still haunted by what happened with Paula, as we hear in songs like Desolé. But we can clearly see that he is trying to move on and free himself. I believe that everything will ultimately come down to 2D literally confronting the ghost from his past, and saving the gorillas from whatever vengeful fate she has planned for them. Things are going to get bumpy when she realizes that Murdoch tricked her. Ah, uh, did you a favor, mate? She was a rubbish-looking bird. Seriously, she looked like Grace and Perry or something. The best shot of her. You are. It, it's just a principle. Look, she was depressingly ugly. 
easily enough to put you off your dinner. I mean, you should thank me. But in the process, this journey will free Tootie from Paula's grip at last. All that's left of that old relationship is toxicity. Well, that's what I think at least. What's your opinion on all of this? Let me know in the comments so we can discuss more gorillas. I absolutely love the band and would love to dive into more of the lore with you soon. But for now, keep your eyes wide open and never stop reading. I'll see you all. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and channel members. Thanks to you, I'm able to do what I love. CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jabra Mullins, Free Spirit Katie, Poof Poof, MC Darfur, Vexus, Agniska, Granny Monster, Nightmare Luna, Practical Necromancy, and Archer. Really, thank you so much for everything you do. It means the world to me.